kikiki brada ida prodo zuda ada hara prada sita gaba handa ta brada sita gaba handa ta ma seketeri anda brodo ida brada sita gaba ha parida seketeri anda brodo ida brada sita gaba ha ma suda gabrodo ida brada sita gaba handa ta ma sekeke barida sita brodo ida brada sita gaba ha ma si anda brodo ida brodo sita gaba father thank you oh yes lord we give you praise we give you glory we bless your name jesus we bless your name jesus thank you for this beautiful day for this beautiful week we thank you we thank you. thank you father for your faithfulness for your loving kindness we bless your name jesus we bless your name jesus we bless your name jesus we magnify your name king of glory thank you not unto us oh lord but unto you we give glory Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise God. You are welcome to Apostolic Grace broadcast this beautiful Monday morning. We are broadcasting live from the beautiful city of Abuja, Nigeria. How are you? How have you been, my brother? How have you been, my sister? Glory to God. From wherever you are watching me all over the world, how have you been? How is life with you? How is Jesus treating you? I know one thing. Jesus is treating you well. Jesus, he will treat you well. Glory to God. He said, I have chosen you. You have not chosen me. And the Bible says in Psalm 132 and verse 13, he said, I have chosen Zion. He said, here will I abide forever. I will make provision for her. I will provide for her provision <laughs> Praise God. It means that God has chosen you as his Zion. And then, because he has chosen you, he is bound to take care of you. Now, there was a day, a night, I was worried about my family. Worried not about myself. I have very little worries. That's the truth. I have very little need. My need is so small that I don't give attention to those things. But my family and ministry are things I give attention to. And so that day I was lying on the bed. I was tired, frustrated, and all of that. How are these needs going to be taken care of? And God whispered into my heart. You know what he said? He said, I will take care of your family. Whoa, that was comforting. That was consoling. That was encouraging he came as a word of assurance wow the lord himself the hell shall die the hell shall die the all sufficient the all sufficient one telling me i will take care of your family boom that was the end of frustration and so that's why i said no matter what jesus will take care of you god the father of our lord jesus christ he will take care of you the Bible says Psalm 1, Psalm 4, 4 verse, sorry, Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. It says, But my God shall supply all, all, not one, not two, all of the need that you may have. Glory to Jesus. All. Glory to God. So let me ask you, I was church service yesterday. I'm sure you went to church. If you didn't go to church, you did yourself a wall of evil. That's the truth. Because when we go to church, especially on Sunday morning, we go to receive instruction. Instruction for what? Instruction for the new week. Are you still there? Glory to God. That's when God opened his heart through his, the mouth of his servant to speak to you. So how was church service today? I hope you learned something for the new week. If you have not learned something, this is another opportunity for you to learn, to, to learn something. So sit down, relax. Make sure you learn something that will take you through the week. That's one of the reasons for this broadcast, by the way, you know, to send God's word to people and for them to run with the word and for them to see miracles happen in their lives. Miracles happen every day. God still do miracles. He is a miracle worker. That's what he does. Amen. That's what God is doing right now, doing miracles for his children and for as many as who believe. The major thing there is that you believe. Glory to God. Now, what am I, what have I come to do for you today? 
seriously. I did not come to preach at you today. I came today to encourage you. The Bible says, encourage each other, one another with these words. What word? The word, the good news. The good news, the gospel of Jesus. What gospel? It, 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 the gospel is that it will be well with you. That's basically what Jesus came to tell us. Yes, because God had caused Adam in Eden. And Jesus is telling us here, I he said, I came that you may have life. I came that you might live well. Third John verse 2, I wish above all that thou mayest prosper even as thy seed, that thou mayest prosper even as thy soul do well. So that's what God intends for. That is his good news. Jesus told his disciples, said, go preach the good news to the poor. What good news? The good news basically is this. It will be well with you. You will do well. I will take care of you. That's the good news. Amen. That's the good news. Good news. What good news does somebody who is in trouble, who is in trauma, who is sick, who is, um, who is poor, what good news does he want? The good news is this. It will be well. That's the good news. For you to tell that person that God he will provide for you. And that's what I want to share with you this morning. God is your provider. Amen. I'm sure you have seen the flyer, Jehovah Jireh. The Lord who provides. Now, that word came from the mouth of Abraham when he was climbing Mount Moriah, Genesis 22. God has told Abraham, and the Bible says, verse 1, said, And God did tempt Abraham. He said, Bring me your son, your only son, Isaac, unto Mount Moriah, and sacrifice him for me. Isaac did not know what was going on. Glory to God. Listen, I like you to believe the word of God from my mouth today. I like you to, to shift your focus from the from the world. Shift your focus from the economy of the nation. Shift your focus away from the hardship. I know there is hardship in the land. I know. I am in this land. We are in Nigeria together. And listen to me, it is not only in Nigeria, it is all over the world. But I have learned something, my friend. I have learned from scriptures and from personal experience that God decided to bless his people more during farming. Yes. And that is when God blesses his people more. That is when he shows up for his people more. Glory to God. When the farming is heavy, when the farming is terrible, when, the, the, when things are dark, the Bible says, and there will be gross darkness to people. <laughs> but the Lord God of heaven, he will sustain his people. He said, but the glory of the Lord will shine upon you. Look at Egypt, Israel in, in the land of Egypt. When God sent Joseph, um, Moses to them, to Pharaoh, to let his people go, Pharaoh said, who is the Lord that I will let, the, let Israel go? What is this? Can you get out of my side? And God began to do miracles, plagues in Egypt. <laughs> the peculiar one was when there was darkness, 17 our darkness you couldn't see the person standing in your face you won't see imagine people bumping on each other imagine just imagine cars driving in darkness just imagine that they flipped on the the headlamp there was no light it, even though the engine was running the battery was fine imagine the confusion the commotion but in goshen oh my friend in goshen there was 24 hours light Hey, Lord have mercy. The light was not coming from the electricity companies. That, Lord have mercy. The light was not coming from the solar power. No. The light was not coming from the hydro dam. No. The light was coming from the throne of God. Hallelujah. The Bible says God was their light. He said there was no day nor night. God was giving them light in Goshen. We are his people dwell. So, my friend, I am giving you assurance today according to the word of the Lord God. We take care of you. Listen, God is your provider. Not the economy of your nation, not the government of your nation, not your job, not your paycheck, not what you have saved. Those things are very good. Your job is good. Your paycheck is good. The money you have saved is good. And all of that, your insurance, they are very good. Amen. But listen, listen to me. Get this into your being. God is your provider. 
Not those things you have put away. Listen, people have put away stuffs in Egypt when Joseph was prime minister. They have bought stock. They have bought um, um, shares or something, investment. They have invested in, in, in real estate. They, have, they, have, they were into business. They were saving money. They had all things going, but when the farming hit, remember, Joseph has prophesied, prophesied, so to say, because he, he, he interpreted the dream of Pharaoh. He said, there will be seven years of famine, Father, thank you. He said, there will be, thank you, Father. He said, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. He said, there will be seven years of famine. He said, there will be seven years of plenty. And then after that, there will be seven years of famine. And the seven years of famine will be as if there had not been plenty before in the whole world. So Egypt began to stock up food and all of that grain from all over Egypt. Then when the famine hit, the people came, Joseph opened the, the storehouses for them, began to sell. Now the Bible says, where and when money came, you see right there, those things can fail. Mm, money can fail. The Bible says, someone say money can, can grow wings and fly away. Mm -hmm. Think about it. I'm not saying stock is not good, investment, shares, and all of that business. He's talking up money or piling up money or not piling up now, saving up money is good. Your job is good, your paycheck is good, your salary is good, your wages is good, and all of that. But listen, my friend, those things can fail. There is no institution of man that cannot fail. Nothing that man created that cannot fail. But God will not fail. Hallelujah. God doesn't fail. He will never fail. He has never failed. He can never fail. Amen. We used to sing some song. One this song way back. He can never ever fail. He can never ever fail. He can never ever fail. Jesus the same forever. He can't fail. The Bible says Hebrews. 13, it said, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, for all eternity. Let me go back to the story of Abraham. So God told Abraham, he said, bring your son to Mount Moriah for me, and sacrifice it, I want to eat him. Imagine, now God had promised Abraham previously, that I'm going to give you a seed from the, your loins, it shall come from Sarah, your wife. And so when God told Abraham, bring your son, your only son, God was specific. God mentioned Isaac. Bring him to the mountain. Sacrifice him for me. That's all. Now was God going to really eat Isaac? Well, God don't eat things. He doesn't eat. He said, the seed by the goat belongs to me and the, the catch you upon a thousand hills. If I were hungry, I wouldn't tell you. I would pick from those stuff and then eat. <laughs> Praise God. And then as they were climbing the mountain, Isaac asked his father, Dad, I not, I don't understand. We have the fire, we have the wood. We are the lamb for the sacrifice. I'm sure your children are asking you at this time, Dad, how is school fees going to be paid? How are we going to have the next meal? We don't have fuel in the generator. There is no public light, public power. And they are, they are asking you such questions. Your wife comes in and said, how are we going to eat this night? How are we going to get to work tomorrow? There is no fuel in the generator. I don't have any money. Imagine such questions going through your mind. Imagine your, your family asking you such questions. Imagine your family, your wife asking you, how are we going to pay for the medical bill? Imagine your your spouse asking you, what are we going to do? The landlord is coming tomorrow morning to pick up his money. What are we going to do? The court is coming tomorrow because we are going. How are we going to do? Imagine. Abraham opened his mouth. Listen. Listen right now. Abraham opened his mouth. And he said, the Lord will provide for himself a land. Hmm. Pause. Pause. Let me read that place for you from the scriptures. Look at it. Look at verse 7. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father. 
and said, My father, and he said, Yeah, my, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but we are in the lamb for a burnt offering. Amen. Verse 8, look at, just pause. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a bunch of it. A lamb. If that Bible is your own, if that, just highlight it. If the Bible is your own, if it is parchment, underlining, if it is your phone or your tablet, highlight. Provide himself a lamb. I light lamb. Because I will see come back to that. God helping me. God will provide himself a lamb. Jehovah Jireh. He will provide himself a lamb. Why did I ask you to pause? It was God who asked Abraham to come to the mountain with Isaac. I was going to sacrifice him. Hmm. The same Abraham, knowing fully well that God instructed him to bring Isaac to this mountain to be slaughtered. The same Abraham said, the Lord will provide for himself a lamb for a burnt offering. In Romans chapter 4, I, I, I think, Paul was explaining what happened there. He said, Abraham knew. That he that instructed him to sacrifice Isaac was able to raise him up also. Now that's a type of Jesus, but that's not what I'm talking about today. It means that in the inner recess of Abraham, he knew God was not going to sacrifice. God, God was not going to let him sacrifice his son Isaac. He knew that this is something like, this is a test. He knew that God, but he was prepared. Like I always say, Abraham had sacrificed Isaac in his heart. Look, Abraham was so sure. That's where I'm driving this point to. Abraham was cock sure. God has shown up before. He has done it before. He will do this again. He was sure. So in his mind, he had sacrificed. If you want Isaac, I'm giving you Isaac. That is assurance. The Bible says, now faith is the evidence of things of is the, is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith, calling those things that be not as though they were. Abraham had settled in, thank you, Father. Brother, Ida, Bahanda, Mosuta, Bahanda, Brodo, Ida, Bahanda. I trust you will understand this word this morning. Abraham believed that even if he slaughtered Isaac physically, God will raise up Isaac. Glory to God. So he had sacrificed Isaac in his mind. And so he was giving that boy assurance, God, he will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. And Isaac believed his father. The Bible says, Abraham believed and it was accounted unto him for righteousness. For right standing with God. What does that mean? It means that for aligning himself with God, at this time, my friend, there is famine everywhere. But what do you have to do? Align yourself with the Lord. Align yourself. The Bible says, acquaint thyself with him. Believe the word from his mouth, I pray thee. And then good shall come to thee. What do you have to do? Align yourself with the Lord. Align yourself with his word. My God shall supply all my need. According to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus, not by the economy of your nation, not by the money you have saved up, not by your investment, not by whatever it is, your paycheck or your salary or your the profit from your business, according to this, uh, to the riches of, in Christ in Jesus, in Christ in glory, glory to God. Hallelujah. So Abraham was giving that young man assurance. God will provide. Forget it. Let's go up the mountain. God will provide for himself a, 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 a lamb for a burnt offering. Glory to God. God is your provider. In Genesis 17, that's a word there. The Bible says, in the Bible says, and God revealed himself to Abraham as the El Shaddai, as the Almighty. Glory to God. I like that scripture very well, but Genesis 17, verse 1. And when Abraham was 19 years 
old and one and nine. The Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. I am the Almighty. The word Almighty there is from the Hebrew word El Shaddai. El God. Shaddai. Shad. Breast. Thank you, Father. I'm coming. Hold on. Hold your breath. Hold your breath. El God. Shad. Breast. Thy multiple breasts. Or El Shaddai. Multiple breasts. So we can say in this verse, and when Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the all-breasted God. I have breast all over my body. Thank you, Father. As many as we come to me and latch on the breast, they will suck and suck. They will get provision. They will get abundance. They will get supply. I am the El. God shall die multiple breaths. I have breaths all over. The 8 billion or so of you on earth cannot suffer lack as long as you align with me and you speak to the breast. <laughs> Are you seeing that? I am El Shaddai. So God, the El Shaddai, is not just the all-sufficient one. He's the all-breasted. Thank you, Father. Oh, I will explain that one in days to come. The El Shaddai. And I've seen him show up. He has shown up. A hey, Lord. A hey, Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. We give you praise and glory for being our El Shaddai. Our El El Shaddai. He said, I am El Shaddai. Walk before me and be thou perfect. What does that mean? Align yourself with me. Align yourself with my word. If I say to you, I'm going to provide, I'm going to provide. If I say to you, I will provide, I have provided already. Are you still there? God is your provider, not your job, not your business, not your career. Those things are very good, but God is your provider. Jehovah Jireh, that's who I'm bringing to you today. Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Jireh, God, your provider. Hallelujah, God, your provider, God. Listen to me, God is your provider. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. God is your provider. <laughs> Thank you, Father. We give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you for being our provider. Thank you, Father, for being our provider. Thank you for being our provider. Thank you. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. We give you glory. We bless your name, Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you glory. Thank you. Oh, yes, Lord, thank you. Oh, yes, Lord, thank you. Blessed be your name, Jesus. Blessed be your name, Jesus. Mazibaha, Brudu, Ida, Prada, Sita, Gabaha. Mazidaha, Prada, Ida, Brudu, Ida, Pahandata. Mazigidiri, Anda, Paha, Brudu, Ida, Ta, Brada, Ida, Pahandata. Thank you, Father, for being our provider. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you glory. Mazibaha, Brady Ida, Pahandata. Brudu Ida, Prada Zida, Handata, Pahanda. Brudu Ida, Prada Zida, Ha. Maziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziziz
Glory to God. Baha, brother Ida, Bahanda, Tabrudu, Suta, Gabaha, Masiki, Kiki, Ki, Bahanda, Prudu, Ida, brother Ida, Tabahanda, Ta, Mazida, Ha, Bahanda, Brudu, Ida, brother Sita, Gabaha, Masiki, Ki, Baha, Prudu, Ida, brother Andata, Masiki, Teri, Anda, Prudu, Ida, Bahanda, Brudu, Ida, Bahanda, Ta, Father, with Thank you for being our provider. Thank you, Father. Listen, this is your assurance for you to believe that God is your provider. At this time, listen, listen. The government are supposed to provide some things, but they are not. So shift your attention, your focus from them and put your focus on Jesus. The Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Hold on to Jesus. Hold on to him. He is your supplier. Am I saying you should disregard government? That's what I'm saying. But I'm saying remove your hope from them. Oh, put your hope on Jesus. Oh, they made promises they are filled. The best of man is man. That's the truth. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. Because if you put your trust in man, man will give you what he can give you. And the best of man is man. But when you put your hope and your trust in the Almighty, the El Shaddai, you see Him provide for you. God is your source. Amen. Even if you have everything going on for you, God is your source. Look unto Jesus. God is your supplier. Jehovah Jireh is your supplier. He is your supplier. He is your provider, not any man. Nobody can provide for you. Don't you ever think that you have you, what, what you have is, is supplied by your mind. No. What you have is supplied by God. You must make God your source. That's the point I'm making uh, to you. You must make God your source. He is your source. He is your provider. You have to labor with your hand. That's correct. You have to wake up in the morning, go to work. The Bible says, eat that we know what we know, eat. <laughs> you have to do all of the work. Look at me. Listen to me. Listen. Hear the word of God from my mouth this morning. God is your provider, not those things. Glory to God. Now, let me take a pause and ask you, please help me share the link to this video. Like, comment, share. Praise God. Type for me in the comment section right now, God is my source. God is my provider. God is my source. God is my provider. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the name of the Lord. Share, share, share the, the, the link all across your social media platform. And let me also say, if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, do it right now. The button is somewhere under there. Like, comment, share, like, comment, share, subscribe. And if you are not following me on my YouTube, um, uh, sorry, Facebook page, please go ahead, go uh, Apostolic Broadcast Live, go ahead, follow me right now. That's, this is what I do. I share God's word. I pray for people. I don't have another thing I do. That's what I do. The content I create is the gospel. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Tell somebody to tell somebody to tell somebody about Apostolic Grace Broadcast and the Lord God of Heaven. He will bless you. I was saying that everything you are is by divine provision. Is by divine providence. You don't own anything. Everything you think you own belongs to God. Amen. And God is your supplier. But my God shall supply all your need. That does not mean that you fold your hand and wait for food. No. You put your hand to the plow. You fold your sleeve and put your hand on the plow. You dirty your hand. But even at that, God is your supplier. He is Jehovah Jireh. Let me say this to you. Thank you, Spirit of God. Let me say this to you. Abraham, at that time, was a multi-billionaire. Oh, Abraham was wealthy. Abraham could buy all the lambs in the whole of the East for sacrifice. But in spite of that, he still obeyed God and looked up to God and held on to God. Because God had told him previously in Genesis 17, I am the El Shaddai. I am the Almighty. I am your sufficiency. Listen, your sufficiency is in God, not in any man. I thought I should let you know that. I'm going to close with a scripture, but let me say this to you. I ask you to underline a, a lamb that time. And this is where I'm going. Look at verse 12 of that Genesis 22. Look at 
Look at it. Let me read from verse 10. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, toss. Why did the angel have to call Abraham twice? Why not once? It shows to me a man who has blocked his ears to the noise of the world, to the noise of distractions. He has blocked his ears to the noise of, to the cries outside, to the, the doubt outside. He has closed his ears to the realities, the economic realities, economic dynamics, economic um, predictions, and whatever they call it. He closed his ears. So the angel had to shout, Abraham, Abraham, before Abraham could talk. His mind was made up. The Bible says somewhere in uh, Psalm, he said, And God will bless the man whose heart is stayed on him, whose heart is on the Lord, not on the world. Thank you, Father. Listen, I told you last week, whatever I share on this platform, I share it, I'm sharing it from experience. I have gone through it. I told you last week how I couldn't buy diaper. One, one diaper, one diaper for my baby. Not a pack, one. That when the baby is wearing the last one, we are trusting God that the baby will not poo. That's wicked. How will you pray that the baby, the baby shouldn't poo throughout the day? That the baby shouldn't pee throughout the day? But guess what? If God will not make the baby not to poo or, 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 or we. God will provide for us to buy not one dapa, but a pack of dapa. I've been there. But I told you from the beginning, we are in this together. But listen, myself and my family, we have made the decision to look up to God. Hello. And, 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 and he said, Here am I. I'm still reading verse 11. And he said, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing that thou, seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram, underlined a ram. There, verse what? Verse 8, a lamb. God will provide for himself a lamb. Abraham was expecting a lamb, a small, a kid. The, the, the baby of a ram, <laughs> praise God. That's what he was expecting. Abraham was expecting a small, small provision, small cup. Let's let just bring something. Let's just give us a cup of water. But see what God provided. He saw behind him a ram. More like you are asking for a cup of water. But God brings you an ocean. Where you can drink from, your family can drink from, people around you can drink from. Look at the woman who came to Elisha, whose, whose husband had died and leaving a lot of death for the woman. And those who, who the husband while was when he came to take his uh, two sons for born men to become uh, slaves in his household until all the deaths are remitted. And Elisha asked her, what do you have in there? I said, I don't have anything but a small oil. He said, that's enough. Then go borrow vessels and lock yourself up and begin to pour the oil. And as the woman poured the oil, as much vessel as she was able to get, the more she poured, the more she had oil until the vessels finished. Hello. Stop, see, stop living with God with your senses. Stop analyzing God with your senses. Well, let's manage what we have. Uh, God, uh, excuse me, God is big. God is the extra guy. God, he owns the whole world. The sin and the gold belongs to you. You may be expecting small boy. Pray for you today. God will give you big. Abraham was expecting a lamb, but God gave him a ram. God knows what he will do. Hello. God knows what he will do. Jesus, when there was after he crucified and he asked the disciples to go, if they could give 5,000 men, aside women and children, a food, they told him there is no food anywhere. Jesus Christ said, Go and check. The Bible says Jesus, God, Jesus knew what he will do. He knew what he was going to do. He knew. So God knew what he was going to do for Abraham before asking him to go on the mountain. Look at that verse 12. He said, I know that you fear God. The question is, my friend, do you fear God? I'm not talking about clinging fear. When he says something to you, do you reference him and believe that word? Abraham believed. Believe God, my friend. 
don't believe in your salary or in whatever you have or, or, or whatever you have you have laid up somewhere don't believe in those things believe in god believe the lord thy god that's the word believe the lord thy god believe his word those things that you have they are good god gave them to you but every time look up to god Glory to God. And God gave Abraham a lamb. Imagine the joy. God will give you joy in the midst of this famine. Say amen. Say amen. Shout amen. Say amen. Type amen for me right now in the comment section. Type amen. Say amen. Amen. God will provide for you. God will secure you. God will succor you. He will supply all your need. In this family, say amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in the ticket by his own. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. Listen, the ram had been there before Abraham came up that mountain. The ram had been there, but he didn't see it. What does that say to you? Until you take steps. And follow God's instruction. What he wants to give to you, you won't see it. You know, you see, people want to see and be see before they believe. Mm -mm, it doesn't work in this kingdom. In God's kingdom, it is believe and then see. The ram had been there before Abraham climbed the mountain. Let me even extend it. The, the, the lamb had been there before God told Abraham to come to the mountain. Listen, your provision has been there before you came to that point. Thank you, Father. I'm telling you from assurance, I mean, from, from experience. The provision has been there before the need came. But until you take your steps and follow instruction, you will see the provision. I will share an experience with you. I've shared that experience before way back. When we, we, you know, when we got married and we have our first child, things were a lot, a lot tough. Of course, we are missionaries and don't, don't that. No, no support was coming from anywhere but from God. Then God spoke to me on Sunday, said, praise me throughout this week. Oh, that's easy. You know, those days we used to pray every three hours, every three hours, just pray. pray. Anywhere we are, either we are together or not, we just pray every three hours and all of that. We pray, we sing, we rejoice and all of that. In the midst of the poverty, even our little boy would join us. <laughs> Amen. I used to we'd be running around the house and just praying and just singing and all of that. Praise God. And, and, and then I said, it's okay. By Monday morning, we started praising God. And I praise God. By Thursday, yes, by Thursday, somebody called us from a do state. He said, I sent you money um, on Monday, and you go to this social so and so bank and you pick up the money. Now, these were the days when you know this money, this transfer was not there. You know, you have to the person had to send the money to you in, in his account. You have to physically go to the bank, write um, um Withdraw a slip or something like that. You have to sign. You have to physically present. They take your picture. Uh, you know, you have to some, some print, sign, all of that. And it takes between three and five working days before the money is mature for you to collect. Yes. Glory to God. He called on Thursday. God spoke to us on Sunday. Praise me throughout this week. Monday morning, we started praising. Imagine if we did not start praying. So, before God gave us instruction, he has made provision available. Now, ask me how much the money the man sent. 5,000 naira. Whoa, that was, a, that was like 5 million. I'm telling you the truth. But imagine if we did not obey instruction. The problem is not the supply or the provision. The problem is us not listening to the instruction of God. Your problem with, is with us not listening to the instruction of God and not taking steps to follow instructions. If Abraham had not come to this mountain, this ram will still be there until Abraham come. Hear me. Come close. Let me tell you this this morning. Your provision is waiting. Is there. And it will keep waiting. Until you obey instructions. Until you follow the word of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Are you still there? Wow. Wow. Let me say to you. As I begin to close this morning. And as I pray for you. Listen. God is your provider. 
I'm going to read the closing scripture right now. And I trust God to give you understanding. Look at it because I, I know that God is going to make provisions for you at this time. Glory to God. He's going to make provision for you. It's a long ribbon. Let me quickly go through it and then show you. This place is talking about God will provide for you in the land that you are going, a land where there is no scarcity, no, no, no lack, a land where you will dig gold, a land where that is flowing with milk and honey, a land where you don't need to dig well to do irrigation for your land, a land where the rain from heaven water the earth. Look at it. Verse 10. When thou hast eaten and art full, that thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he had given thee. Beware. Verse 11, that thou forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandment and his judgment and his status which I command thee this day. Lest thou hast eaten and had food and had built goodly houses and dwell therein, and when thy herd and thy flocks multiply and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all that thou hast is multiplied, then thy heart be lifted up. And thou forget the Lord thy God which brought thee forth out of the hand of, land of Egypt from the house of bondage. On thee who led thee through that great and terrible wilderness, wherein were fairy serpents and scorpions and drought, and where there was no water, who brought thee forth water out of the rock of flame, who fed thee in the wilderness with manna which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee, and that he might prove thee to do this deal good at thy latter end. And thou say in thy heart, My power and might of mine are gotten me this wealth. Verse 18. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth the power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swear unto thy fathers, as it is this day. The Lord is saying to you, I'm going to make provisions for you. I'm your provider. I'm your supplier. I'm your El Shaddai. I'm going to do all of this. But don't you ever forget. See, that's the problem with man. When we go through things, when we go through trouble, we are looking for a job, looking for a wife, looking for children, looking for God to show up, and all of that, and all of that. The moment God shows up, we forget. Oh, the euphoria of our need being met make us forget God. God is saying, but thou shalt earnestly remember the Lord thy God. Look at that, the way Amplified render. He said, thou shalt earnestly remember the Lord thy God. For it is he who gives you power to get wealth. What is he saying? You must constantly recognize that God is your provider. That God is your source, not your job, not your money, not your estate, not your, your, your employer, not your paycheck, not your salary. That God is your supply. That's where I'm going to close from today. Remember that he, it is he that giveth you that gives you power to get wealth. And also remember that there are people going through what you have gone through. So when God has taken you through and given you a breakthrough, remember those people also. Extend your hand to the poor, to those who do not have. Don't say where they are less, they should go and get a job. Hello, excuse me, sir. Excuse me, ma. You also were there before. So extend your hand of fellowship to them. Give them the little from you what you are. Share with people. Distribute. Communicate. The, the Bible says, he said, say to them that are rich in Israel that they should communicate. They should distribute their wealth. Because if you don't, the source will dry up. But I pray for you. Your source will not dry in the name of Jesus, your source will not dry. I pray for you today as you go, my friend. I didn't know time had gone like this. I'm so excited, you know, sharing God's word. I pray for you. As you look up to Jesus as your provider, may he supply your need. May he provide for you. In the name of that provision is settled. That provision is taken care of. That need is taken care of. Today, today, the, 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 the overjoyly, he will show up for you. You are expecting a lamb, but we bring you a ram. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are expecting a cup, but he will bring, bring you a truck. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are expecting a room, but he will give you a house. In the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, we exceed your expectation. The Bible says, and God is able to do exceeding abundantly more than you can ever think or imagine according to the power that works within us. I pray for you. God will supply your need, even as you go this week. God will supply the need of your business, your family, your career. God will supply the need for health. 
In the name of Jesus Christ, you will not be stranded. If you over diary, he will show up for you today. He will manifest himself for you today and this week. In the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus Christ, you will not lack. God will supply all your need. He has made the supply available. What you need, follow his instruction. Obey him. Look up to him. Don't lean on your own understanding. And it will be well with you. Let me say it again. God wants it well with you. It will be well with you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I commit to the word of his grace which is able to keep you from falling. May God uphold your hand. In the name of Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May he, may he make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May, may the Lord command his peace upon you. In the name of Jesus You will live in peace throughout this week and beyond. In the name of the peace of God in your heart. Don't forget, if you are not following me on Facebook, do so right now. If you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, go ahead and do it. Like, comment, share. Like, comment, share. Share this video all across your social media platforms. And the Lord God of heaven, we bless you. My name is Emmanuel Adeyomoye. I just want to be a blessing. God bless you. I'll see you again Monday morning, 5.30 West African time. Have yourself a superb, beautiful, amazing week. Jesus' name.